Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. We are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And last year we talked about their home theater PC app called HTPC and it was in beta. Now it is officially released. And what this app does is it turns your computer hooked up to your television into a Plex client. So for example, when I load up the app here, you can see it just goes full screen and we get a very familiar Plex interface. And if you're somebody who has a PC attached to your television, this might be a great thing to try out because it's made a lot of progress since we looked at it last year. Now, I am still of the opinion that the NVIDIA Shield Pro is probably your best bet for the best support for all the different video formats out there. But we're starting to see some good alternatives beginning to spring up. Second to the NVIDIA Shield is the Xbox One series and the Xbox Series series of game consoles, which we did a few months ago. And now I'm seeing the PC here beginning to catch up as well. This home theater PC client does have some support for HDR and it supports lossless audio pass-through. So a little bit earlier, we were able to get uh, Dolby Atmos Audio working uh, on one of my 4K Blu-ray movies that I was playing earlier. And it was also able to switch the TV into HDR mode. And what I thought would be helpful in this video, because we've covered the beta version of this client in the past, is to begin with some of the settings that you need to get this client working properly and then we'll dive into some of the other features that the app provides. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how this home theater client is working out. All right, so let's begin on the settings screen here and look at what we need to do to get started with this. Now, by default, you're not going to get the most out of the client, and that is why we have to dig into this a bit. We're going to start with audio and what I suggest you do to get the pass through working is to enable exclusive audio by hitting the enter key over that option there. And then what you want to do is go into audio device and you need to point it at your HDMI port. And when you do that, you'll see some additional options get added. So you saw that I selected the active HDMI connection that I have right now. And now I have a new option here for the device kind. I'm gonna select HDMI. You also have the option to send audio uh, out through an optical connection if you have that. And I'm going to select HDMI here and you can see it added a bunch of new options. This reminds me a lot of what I've seen on Kodi in the past where you have to tell it what audio modes that you believe your computer supports. But as you can see here, you get DTS HD, you get DTS DCA, True HD and all the other uh, Dolby AC3 formats. And this is what got uh, pass-through audio working for me. Before I enabled this, it was just passing through PCM audio. So this is what I had to do to get that Atmos stream working that you saw earlier. So now that we have the audio configured, we're gonna take a look at video next. And when we go into video, uh, by default, it'll look largely the way it looks here. But I do wanna enable a couple of things. First is refresh rate switching. This is really important because most movies are shot at 24 frames per second. So you want to have your television shift into that 24p mode in order for those movies to look correct from a frame rate standpoint. Otherwise you get juddering and all sorts of crazy effects. So turn that on. Uh, one thing that I've been leaving off is resolution switching. Normally I like to have my 1080p movies uh, output a 1080p signal. But I'm finding right now, at least at the current version, that my computers are having a hard time properly switching into the 1080p resolution. So I've been leaving this off and having the computer upscale to 4K for my 1080p movies. But eventually they'll fix that. And then if you want to have your TV do the upscaling, I would enable that option. Now you also have an option here for HDR. And HDR is really complicated right now on this client from what I'm reading, but I'm gonna turn it on anyhow. And if your Windows PC supports HDR output, the computer will get switched into HDR mode when you load up an HDR movie. Although it's not clear to me at the moment whether all the metadata about that HDR signal is being transmitted. So I think it's kind of a, a more of a generic 
HDR that it's applying to it, but it really will switch your television into that mode and the colors do look correct, although I don't know if they're going to be 100% accurate to uh, the metadata that the movie might have attached to it. Now of note, this does not support Dolby Vision. So if you have Dolby Vision content, you're gonna wanna get an Nvidia Shield to play that content back properly. But again, HDR10 will trigger the switch over into HDR mode. Now another thing that I noticed with this though is that if you have the HDR disabled, it will do what's called tone mapping to make the HDR video viewable on a non-HDR display. So what I've got here is a non-HDR display, and we're gonna load up a test file here and see how it looks. And the demo we're going to look at is the LG Jazz demo. You've probably seen this a million times. And what you'll see here is that we're not gonna get that gray hue that you typically see when you play HDR back on a non-HDR display. So we'll go ahead and click play here and see what we get. Now it starts off here kind of as still frames, but once the motion starts in the video, you'll see things playing back properly. And it is not giving us that gray hue. I would say these colors are not accurate all the way, but it's certainly viewable and pretty close to what I think you would expect it to look like. And I'll give you my other view here again, also just a non-HDR capture of the machine's output. Note though that it's really working the GPU on this mini PC right now. It's almost 100% uh, trying to play this back, which tells me that this tone mapping is happening locally and not on the server. And another thing that tells me that is when I look at my Plex dashboard here, you can see the processor uh, usage on my server is very minimal. Even though we're serving it some bandwidth here of the file, uh, we're not eating up any system resources to do this tone mapping. And typically tone mapping really puts a load on the server. So it was fun to see all of my HDR movies, at least the non Dolby Vision ones, uh, start up and play back with a decent uh, color translation on a non-HDR display. And that brings us to the topic of the system requirements for this. I tested a bunch of mini PCs prior to recording this video, and this higher end one, which is a B-Link SER4 with an AMD 4800U, performed the best. But this is also probably the most expensive mini PC I've looked at recently. In full disclosure, B-Link did send this to the channel free of charge to review, and we've done a couple of other videos on this device and it's a really nice mini PC. I also tested a bunch of less expensive Intel based mini PCs running with Gemini Lake processors and Jasper Lake processors. Those are their low end chips and none of them could really keep up on the 4K video. I'd see dropped frames, I'd see some not do the uh, HDR switching properly, others didn't do the tone mapping. So it's kind of a hit or miss thing on the lower end of the mini PC scale. And I think the target for this is the type of people that hook up higher end PCs to their home theater systems. And I think that's where the sweet spot's gonna be for this, especially at 4K. Another thing that I noticed with the less expensive PCs is that some don't handle the 24P switching properly. Others don't pass through lossless audio properly. And nobody lists these things in their technical specifications. It's always a hit or miss thing but typically the cheaper PCs often don't do a lot of those things that you'd want a home theater PC to do. So that once again brings me back to the Nvidia Shield is something if you're looking for an out of the box solution to look for, but if you're somebody who does have a higher end PC connected to your home theater system, I think you'll get some pretty good results out of it, similar to what we're seeing with this one. Now that said, if you're sticking to low bandwidth 1080p video, the lower end hardware will probably work fine. Another interesting use case for this might be when you are out on the road. You can kind of turn your laptop into a Plex client. This looks and feels just like it does on an Nvidia Shield or on a Roku or some other uh, smart TV device. And you have all the features, including their streaming TV stations. This will connect to your Plex server remotely, just like any other Plex client would. Uh, you get all of their uh, movies and shows that they're offering. So it really is a full on, full screen, lean back, living room Plex experience that you can get on a computer. 
And then when you are done with it, you just hit the escape key here and you can uh, exit the app or even shut down the computer completely or just put it to sleep. Now to download this, you go over to the Plex.tv homepage, go to downloads and select desktop. And what you'll see here now is that we've got two options for Windows. One is the desktop client, and then the other one is the HTPC client that we're playing with here. But these are now official releases. The last time we looked at this, it was in a forum post somewhere. On the Mac, you'll see a similar option here where you've got the desktop app called Plex for Mac, and then the HTPC option as a separate and distinct download. On the Linux side, right now it's available on the Snap Store. This is the app store that you'll see inside of Ubuntu, and I believe it is making its way into other distribution methods as well. So you should be able to find this on the Linux side too. So download it and give it a shot. I liked what I'm seeing here so far. The HDR, of course, is not perfect, but I like that it does do on-device tone mapping to get the HDR videos to play back properly on a non-HDR device. It even has a screensaver here too. And as you can see, everything is moving around so you don't get your fancy OLED TV with a bunch of burn-in on it. So it really is a, a full-on Plex client that runs on your computer. All the features work here. And I know a lot of you are running with home theater PCs in your environment. This is a real no-brainer to download and install because I think it does work much better on a television than the desktop client does. And as you saw, it adds a couple of useful features that you also won't get on the desktop client. So it's a nice thing here. Not quite up to where the shield is just yet, but it's getting closer. And I think the more choices we have for consuming our media, the better. And I think you'll appreciate the work that they put in to make this home theater PC app a reality. It's also something that would let you run the server and the client on the same device to save physical space too. And that's something a PC would do better than the NVIDIA Shield could do, for example. So we'll keep an eye on this as things develop here. And hopefully as Windows evolves, we'll get better HDR options and we'll come back to this as conditions warrant. That's gonna do it for this one. I wanna thank Plex for their longstanding support of the channel, and I wanna thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman, and thanks again for tuning in. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.